Hi everybody, welcome to another video from the Aperture Academy. I am your host, Scott Donchikowski, and I'm gonna lead you on an expedition here in Lightroom. Uh, today we're gonna talk about the basics of Lightroom. More importantly, importing, um, and what to do after you've installed the program. So, let's talk about it, right? Um, we gotta talk about what Lightroom is, what it does, uh, where it comes from, and how to kind of navigate around a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, First off, nowadays, um, it's almost impossible. If not, I don't know if they've actually made it impossible for you now, um, but most likely your avenue to getting the program is becoming a Creative Cloud member and purchasing the $9.99 a month photography package. That will get you Lightroom and Photoshop, 120 bucks a year, um, and access to all the updates and all the services and everything that would come uh, anytime Adobe creates something new um, or updates the program with something new. <clears throat> so um, to actually facilitate all of that, you will have a program down here um, on a PC called the Creative Cloud Manager. Um, and it's just a way for you to install and update um, and try um, all the programs that Adobe makes. Um, if you are a Creative Cloud member that just has the photography package, um, you'll see that a lot of these applications will just say try on them. Um, the ones that you can install will say install. This is part of your deal. Um, I've already installed Photoshop and Lightroom. <clears throat> you can see I'm in need of an update here, um, which I could say update all, but <laughs> we're already started with the video, so we don't want to do that. Um, but this Creative Cloud Manager is the the most important thing. Um, it's it, it's again it's a way to make sure that you're updated and with the latest versions um, of everything. Um, as some people have installed Lightroom but forgotten how they done it or forgotten how they did it and uh, don't have Photoshop installed and are wondering like where's my Photoshop? Well, it's here. Go to your Creative Cloud Manager and open it up. Um, on a Mac, this icon here will show up on the top right of your screen with all the other um, kind of notification type stuff um, on a Mac. So you just click that, it'll open up your Creative Cloud Manager, and then you can either update or install uh, the programs that you're willing to work with. <clears throat> all right, so that is how we start. Uh, once you do that and you install Lightroom and you open it for the first time, you're gonna get this. Um, it's it's Lightroom. Hello. Um, <clears throat> and what I've gone and done is I, I've created a, a, a fresh catalog um, that has nothing in it, um, and I've just named it Lightroom Test. So that's an important distinction here, right? <clears throat> um, Lightroom is based on this catalog. Um, the catalog is the uh, it's where Lightroom stores all of its information. Um, and it's a big, giant database. This is all it is. Um, it's a set of pieces of information that Lightroom can access very quickly. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Lightroom is so fast is because it just puts stuff in a database. It doesn't really have to do anything other than just write ones and zeros in a matrix. That's it. Um, so <clears throat> if I show you where that is, and I've created one on my desktop. So let me go to my desktop here and have a folder called Lightroom Test. <clears throat> and we open that up. <clears throat> Desktop, Lightroom test, and here we are. And we have a bunch of stuff, right? So this is the catalog of, of Lightroom. There's my catalog right there. And this is where the brains of the program lie, right? It's everything that Lightroom does is stored in here. Um, on the surface, um, or I should say just basically Lightroom is just a referencing program. It is going to reference only the photos that you want it to, right? Um, referencing meaning you're importing, right? You're just creating these dynamic links between the photos and the program so that you can access where they are on disk, you can move them around if need be, um, and you can actually work with them. Um, everything that you do in Lightroom after importing is generally just creating a preview of those changes. Um, it doesn't actually edit your raw files. It's just editing a preview on screen for you, right? So that's why there's the second button down here, export, right? Once you do all the changes that you've made in Lightroom, Lightroom will then take those changes and export out a secondary file, right, that has all of that information in it, right? It's not your original raw file, okay? So 
let's start, let's ask Lightroom now to just import some photos, right? So to do that, I'm gonna click on the import dialog. <clears throat> and um, uh, it's, it's actually asking me um, to import from my card. I don't wanna do that yet. I'm gonna go to some images that I have on disk because most likely you guys all have images that are already on your computer just ready to go, ready to be imported into Lightroom, images that you wanna edit. <clears throat> all right, so most likely they're all gonna be in your pictures folder. So on a Mac or on a PC, if you click on your hard drive, users, your user name, and your pictures folder, <clears throat> that's most likely where they're gonna be. Um, in my pictures folder, I have a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I do a lot of work other than photography, graphic design, marketing materials, that kind of stuff. So I don't want to import everything in that this pictures folder. You may very well have some stuff in there that you don't want Lightroom to reference as well. Um, so I've created a folder here just called Master Pictures. And there's 55 images there from just raw images um, that I've taken, um, that I've taken out of my professional Lightroom catalog, just so just so I can have something to do for this particular lesson. And all these photos are taken at various times all around the world. In fact, all the images here were taken on places that Aperture Academy goes. So if there's somewhere here that you're dying to go to, well, you know, go to our website and check out. There's a very good chance that you could be standing in one of these spots taking a photo on one of our workshops. There you go, there's my marketing spiel for this particular video. Um, okay, so I have all of my images that I would like to start working with in Lightroom in my pictures folder and I'm ready to go. Let me do that one more time. I'm gonna just minimize all this stuff here. I'm gonna click on my hard drive. So on a Mac, it'd be the same thing, right? You click on your hard drive, whatever you've named it. <clears throat> and then users, the username, pictures, and then wherever your photos are gonna be, right? They might be just floating here in the pictures folder. That's okay, just click pictures and then have it import everything. Um, if you have a very complex pictures folder like I do here, then you wanna put your pictures somewhere else, right? So I have a folder again called master pictures. I can illuminate that a little bit more, make this bigger, and you'll see that they're all in kind of these Aperture Academy folders here, all right? So I just want the master pictures um, folder and that's got everything in it. <coughs> and if I click import, what Lightroom's gonna do is it's just gonna create those dynamic links between Lightroom and these photos. It's gonna do nothing else. And the way I can tell that is because at the top of the screen here, you'll see I have four options. Copy as DNG, copy, move, and add. And this is what you're gonna wanna do when you have photos that already exist on a hard drive attached to your computer, right? These pictures are in my pictures folder in my hard drive that's in my computer. So I don't need them to go anywhere else. I don't want to move them or copy them anywhere else. I'm perfectly fine with them being in the pictures folder, and that's where I'd like them to stay. So I'm going to choose Add. Okay? <coughs> Pardon me. So Lightroom has a flow, right? And this is something that you're going to hear me say over and over and over again. It has a flow, left to right and top to bottom. Left to right and top to bottom, right? That's a, a way to keep everything kind of the same, normal um, in the program so that at any time you know that you will start on the left-hand side at the top, work your way to the right, and then eventually down, right? So on the left-hand side here, this is where we're starting, right? And we need to find our source. And our source in this case, the source for the pictures we wanna import is in the master pictures folder here, which happens to be in the pictures folder, which happens to be in the users folder, or my user, users folder, and then eventually on the hard drive. I'm gonna check the box that says include subfolders because there are lots of subfolders here that I'd like to import these images from. And I should say at this point that you'd probably want to be nice and diligent in organizing your images, at least at this point. Um, <clears throat> again, to start from that good foundation. Um, so hopefully when you've, when you've started using Lightroom um, and, and you're just about to import these images that all your images aren't just, you know, from a thousand different locations on God knows how many hard drives. They're probably, they should all be in kind of one spot ready for you to go. Um, so I highly recommend that you organize them that way because if you don't, it's gonna be a lot difficult for you in the long term, right? Starting off being a little bit anal retentive about this um, is gonna basically help you out years to come. <coughs> it's just a good practice. Um, okay, so 
in this window here, it's just gonna show me everything that Lightroom's gonna import, right? 55 photos, if I click all photos, same thing, right? These are all the photos that exist in all these, and they also happen to be new photos as well to Lightroom. Okay, that brings us over to the right-hand side of the screen. So we're going from our local disk, right, just to my catalog. That's it, my catalog again up here, Lightroom test, right, so I know a lot of you have multiple catalogs. If you're unsure of which one is which, just look at the top of your screen, it'll tell you, right? So from my local disk C to my catalog, that's it, it's not going anywhere else. <clears throat> All right, and you'll see I only have two options over here, file handling and apply during import. Um, what do I wanna do here? Well, if you'd like to import faster, just build previews as minimal. Um, if you click standard, that's just gonna make the import process a little more intensive because Lightroom is gonna have to then make previews at three different sizes. So it's gonna make a small preview, a medium preview, and a large preview for you. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you want to work a little quicker in Lightroom, uh, by all means hit standard here. I used to think that doing only minimal was probably the best way because I'm not gonna look at all these photos anyway, so I don't need to have Lightroom build a standard preview for every single image, and I'm gonna keep doing that, so I'm gonna choose minimal for this because I don't mind waiting five seconds for Lightroom to load a larger image, it's okay. Um, I'm not gonna build smart previews. Um, at this point, I don't like that part of Lightroom. I don't use Lightroom Mobile, so this is really only for Lightroom Mobile. If you have this checked and you don't use Lightroom Mobile, either start using Lightroom Mobile or uncheck this box. You don't need smart previews if you're not going to use Lightroom Mobile, which means that you'll have it on a tablet. If you don't have Lightroom on a tablet, uncheck this box. <clears throat> All right, by default, this will be checked. Don't import suspected duplicates. That's a good practice to have. Um, if I uncheck this box, um, then all photos and new photos will be the same all the time, right? You're, if you have images that are on a, a compact flash card or an SD card that you've already imported into Lightroom, it may very well import them again. So don't import suspected duplicates. Um, and then make a second copy too. A lot of people ask me this, what, what is this section over here? Um, well, this is Lightroom's way to duplicate every image that you import, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna literally make a second copy to a folder to be determined by you, and it's gonna put all the images that you import into a dated folder on the date that you imported them. That's very important, not the date that the pictures were taken. It's gonna put them in a folder on the date that you imported them. That's it. So I don't like to do that because I back up my photos in various other ways. <coughs> One of them is using a RAID system. If you're curious to what RAID is, just look it up on Google, R-A-I-D-1, the number one, um, and that will give you a bunch of information on how you can back up your images on your computer. Um, if you'd like to back these up to the cloud, there are various services for that, Carbonite and Crash Plan, just to name two. Um, <clears throat> so look into those if you're worried about losing your data. Um, you can add to a collection if you want to, I'm not gonna do that, and then apply during import, I'm not gonna do anything here either. Um, so if you wanted to, you could add develop settings to each photo, I don't like doing that. You can also add metadata to your photos, this is a little bit more advanced if you wanted to do this, you could click on this and say new, and then you probably wanna come down to where it says IPTC creator, and you can put your name and your city and your email and website. Um, and the copyright status of your photo, right? Um, because if you export these images and put them online, um, someone may wanna take them from you, um, and if they would like to pay you for them, then your information will be there, and at least it will say on the photo that it is copyrighted. Uh, that's not gonna prevent someone from actually using it nefariously. This is not a watermark. That is something completely different. This is just information that makes its way to the metadata. And that's it. So I'm gonna hit cancel here. I don't need to do that for the time being. And then keywords, you can add keywords to photos when you import them. We'll talk about keywords in another lesson. Um, <clears throat> but if you wanted to start keywording, you could do that, right? I could keyword my name in here just to make it easy. Um, all right, because all these images were taken by me. Um, I could do the metadata preset as well, but I'll just make it easy. The only thing that's similar about every single one of these images is this, right? That's it. They're all taken at different times of year, at different places, so putting a keyword uh, in there for all of these images is, is not gonna happen unless 
it's this one, which is the person who actually took them. So that's really the only thing that's similar in terms of words for every single photo. So I'm gonna leave that blank and, uh, except for this. Um, and that's it, right? Again, like all I want Lightroom to do is just start referencing the pictures in this folder. That's it. And then I will hit import. And since I'm only referencing images at this point, it's not gonna do anything else. It's just going to add those photos to the catalog and that's it. So we have 55 images in my master pictures folder that are also in Aperture Academy folder. And then here's all the subfolders that I have diligently um, uh, organized them in over the years, right? So this is very much how it should look on yours as well. So I have some images from Belize and our Big Sur, Carmel, um, Columbia River Gorge, Costa Rica, Scotland and Valley of Fire, Zion, Mount Shasta, Kenya. So, you know, all sorts um, of images in here. We'll go back to master pictures and just kind of show you all of them here. Um, <clears throat> and that's it. I've basically now just gotten some images into Lightroom. I've imported some images. Okay, so that takes care of what happens when you already have images on your hard drive or a hard drive that you would like Lightroom to start referencing. What happens then if you have images that are not on your hard drive. Maybe they're coming from your camera or a flash card, right? So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna hit import again. <clears throat> and now you'll see that by default, Lightroom has just scanned my computer and found that I have a compact flash card or a, a, a card of some sort um, inserted into the computer. Um, I'm using a card reader, so it's got this funky drive letter here, EOS Digital, um, and it's given me all the images that exist on this hard drive. Again, since none of these images have been imported into Lightroom, if I click on All, it gives me 371. If I click on New, it also gives me 371 because all the photos on here are indeed new. All right, and you'll notice something very weird has happened. Do any of you notice anything different about this particular setup yet? There's something that's happened in this import dialog that's different than the last time. It could be five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Do you know what it is yet? Okay, I lied. There's actually two things that have changed. Number one is that the move and add options here are now gone. Um, I only have these two, copy as DNG and copy. And then the second thing that's different is this has now showed up. Destination is now a thing and file renaming is now a thing. So before, remember, it was just file handling and apply during import. Now I have file handling or file renaming and destination, right? This is the only one I'm really concerned with here um, because now that I've inserted a card or a camera into my computer, um, I wanna take those images off of that device, whatever it may be. I highly recommend that you don't use your camera to import the images, i.e. sticking a USB um, connector from your camera to the computer, that's not the best way to get your images off of that device. You're gonna to wanna to get a card reader um, that will speed up the process significantly. Um, if you have a Thunderbolt or a USB 3 card reader, that will do it even faster. Um, so check the connections. If you can afford a USB 3 or a Thunderbolt connector, please do. It will make importing so much quicker than using just the camera by itself. <clears throat> okay. Um, so again, our images are coming from the card reader, that's our source, remember from the last lesson? They're gonna be copied from our source to our local disk, right? So they're gonna go anywhere we want, actually. Um, I could put them on any hard drive that's connected to my computer. Um, but I wanna put them typically where all the other images that I've imported into Lightroom, I wanna put them in the, all the same spot. Um, just to alleviate confusion in the long run. So all my eggs are gonna be in one basket. I know your mom never told you to do that, but I'm gonna tell you to do it here. It just makes it so much easier for you to keep track of everything. Lightroom can keep track of stuff all over the place, but you are less likely to be able to do that, right? So I just like to keep everything in one spot. All my images in a master pictures folder and then lots of subfolders therein, right? But they're all in one particular space. Um, okay, so Again, by default, you'll see that Lightroom has automatically went to my pictures folder, and then it wants to put them somewhere. Now, if I just hit import 
on here, it's gonna dump all these photos loosely without any subfolder into the pictures folder. And I don't want that. That's not a good way to keep everything organized. Um, <clears throat> what I wanna do is I wanna put them in the folder where all my other images are, right? So that's my master pictures folder. Okay, and it's not an Aperture Academy thing, so I'm gonna leave that. I don't want them to go there. If I want them to go there, I can click that. I want them to go in Master Pictures because the images that we see here are gonna be organized a little differently, right? These images are not from Aperture Academy. These are from a client shoot, right? I, I do house, uh, house shoots on occasion um, when I'm not out teaching workshops, so all these images came from two separate house shoots, um, two lovely little houses. <clears throat> in the Bay Area, all right? So I want them to go in my Master Pictures folder, but I'd like them not to just be floating around there, right? If again, if I hit import, it's just gonna throw them here, and I don't want them to do that. I want them to go in a subfolder, you know, to be determined, okay? And we're gonna determine that right now. So if we click on the folder we want them to go in first, which is what we've done, then I want them to go into a subfolder, and I'm gonna name the subfolder something, okay? So I'm just gonna start by naming this one clients, okay? And we're gonna get all these images, despite the fact that there's two separate houses here, uh, we're gonna just put them in a clients folder. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you, when we get into Lightroom, how to manipulate where these images go uh, in the folder section in Lightroom. But I want them to get into Lightroom all at the same time. Now, this could be an issue for a lot of you as well, right? You go out, you have a card in your camera, um, and you come home and you don't import. And then you go out again, and you shoot, and you come home and you don't import. And then you may go out again, and you come home and you don't import. So now there's three separate events on that card in your camera. And you want to import those images, right? Now, I'm kind of of the mindset of get them all in at once and then organize them instead of importing three separate times or four separate times. There's no wrong way to do that. I mean, that's, that's totally fine to do. Um, but I like to get everything into Lightroom at once. And then I'll mess around with uh, moving them once I get them into Lightroom. So that's what I'm gonna do here just to kind of show you a little bit more about how I'm gonna organize it once I get them into Lightroom. But feel free to do it how, whatever feels the right way for you, okay? <clears throat> so again, Master Pictures, I'm gonna make sure it says Clients up here, and then I'm gonna hit Import. Um, before I do that though, there is another way to do this. Um, if I uncheck this box and I choose, instead of organize into one folder, what if I choose by date? So now you'll see that Lightroom is going to, and by the way, when you, when you do anything here, um, before you hit import, it'll show you exactly where the images are gonna go. So it's gonna make a folder called 2016, it's gonna make a folder called 428, and 429, it's gonna put 162 images in one and 209 in the other, right, for a total of 371. So what Lightroom's doing, if you say organize by date, is it's gonna put them all in dated folders based on the metadata of each photo, okay? <clears throat> That's very important. Um, I don't like Lightroom to organize like that because my mind doesn't work in terms of dates, right? Someone can ask me, hey, where were you, what were you shooting on April 28th, 2016? And I would have no idea. But if someone asked me, hey, um, do you know that house um, downtown that you shot? Um, I need more pictures of that. Well, hey, that's easy. I know exactly where that's going to go. Um, I'm more familiar with it that way. And then, oh, by the way, yes, it happened to be on the 28th. So I like to organize my pictures in subfolders based on event, place, thing, um, person, rather than time. Um, there's a timestamp with every single image, and I will show you in later videos on how to find that information, just looking at the metadata or searching through the metadata of every photo in your Lightroom catalog. But for just reference, visual reference, I don't like Lightroom to do that. So I'm not gonna choose organize by date. I'm gonna choose organize into one folder, and I'm gonna name that folder clients, and you'll see it's gonna give me a clients folder with a plus sign there. That's gonna, means it's gonna create this folder when I hit import. So there's a lot of things happening here, right? It's gonna take the images, it's gonna reference these source images from our uh, source, which happens to be our card reader. It's gonna copy everything in that source to 
this hard drive in this subfolder, and then it's also going to put them in the catalog, right? It's gonna do all that stuff when I hit import. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit import here. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Um, I'm not gonna change this because this was the same as last time. I'm not going to rename my images, never do that, especially if you have a newer camera um, that uses alphanumeric coding instead of uh, just the simple four digit number code. Um, renaming images is, a re is a, I've, I've always had real hard times trying to find images for people when they end up renaming them. Um, so I never do that. <clears throat> rename them after you export them. Don't rename them when you import them, okay? So I'm not gonna touch that. Apply during import, again, I can probably, you know, I'll type in my name here. <clears throat> not necessary, but again, might as well just show you something. Um, and then my destination, right? Clients folder inside master pictures. I'm gonna hit import. And now it's gonna take some time to import all these images in. <clears throat> But we have a problem. Um, the images that I'm importing here are all going into this client's folder. Um, and I don't want to dump all my client images into a client's folder. I'd like to have them some semblance of organizing past this level, right? Past clients. Um, so luckily for me, I only have two um, clients houses that I've shot that I'm importing. So what I'll end up doing is I'll end up taking some of those pictures and creating a subfolder for them and then taking the other pictures and creating a subfolder for them, right? So I'm going to show you now how to just move these images around inside Lightroom so you don't have to import twice, right? And again, there's nothing wrong with importing twice. You can totally do that. <clears throat> All right, so... We're gonna let this import a little bit further. Again, Lightroom is just creating reference points to these photos. Now, I've asked it to copy the images, but once it gets into Lightroom, um, I can't really, I can't do anything else to them other than, you know, I can move them around, I guess, okay, technicality there, um, but I can't change them in any other way um, on disk um, other than moving them or deleting them. That's it. Um, once you get to this step, everything is pretty much non-destructive at this point. So if I go to the develop module and I start developing these images, uh, nothing will happen um, <clears throat> to them uh, on disk unless I click export and export those changes out of Lightroom, okay? So don't be afraid to do anything in Lightroom. <clears throat> I mean, be scared that you're going to delete something because that's a possibility. Um, but don't be afraid in, you know, making a mistake of I took a photo and then I, you know, went to the develop module and I made changes to it. And oh, now it's ruined. No, um, totally OK. All right. So we've gotten to the point here. I'm just going to click on clients and then I'm going to scroll down here. And this image is the last image in that first set. Right. So what I can do is, well, I can do one of two things, right? First, I'm gonna take this client's folder, I'm gonna right click on it, right? Just like you would create a new folder outside of Lightroom, right? You could right click and it'll say, oh, create folder. Yes, I wanna do that. I don't wanna include any selected photos for the time being, so I'm gonna uncheck this box. Then I'm gonna name this folder house one <clears throat> and hit create. I'm gonna do this one more time. Create a folder inside, make sure that's unchecked, and I'm gonna type in house two and hit create. So when we expand this out, you'll see we have house one and house two, and there's no images in those folders yet. So this is where I'm gonna start moving these images around on disk, but in Lightroom. You can only do that from the folders area here, right? So I'm gonna start by clicking that first image in my client's area. I'm gonna scroll down to the last image in this particular set of images, or this, this particular shoot, and hold the shift key and click on that last image, okay? So what that's done is that's now selected every image in between, right? Let me do that again. So I click on the first image, I scroll down to the last image that I'd like to select, hold the shift key and click. And now I have all the images in between. And I wanna put these images into one of these folders, right? So I'm gonna just click it doesn't matter which image you click on, just as long as you click in the middle here, right? So I'm gonna click in the middle, I'm gonna drag over to house one, and I'm gonna let go. And it's gonna ask me, are you sure you wanna move these files on disk? And I'm gonna say yes, go ahead and move. So now it's going to deposit 
all the images that I've selected into that house one folder. And you'll see Lightroom's doing two processes up here. It's importing and it's moving some of these images at the same time. Not a problem. <clears throat> and there should be like 170 something or so images that end up in that folder. <clears throat> 162. All right. Okay. And you'll notice that if I scroll around here, it's only the images that I selected from this area. So I'm going to go back to the clients folder. I'm going to go down to that last image that I selected and clients folder here. This is, this is kind of a pain in the ass thing about Lightroom, right? It's, it's showing me everything that exists in this folder, all the images that exist, right? Regardless of which subfolder they're in, right? If I click aperture Academy, there's only 55 images and they're also they're in, you know, what appears to be about 15, 16 different folders, but, it doesn't matter. I'm seeing every image. So I could theoretically, you know, command or control A to select all these images and I could move them, all of them into the Belize folder. And if I click move, it will grab all the images out of all of these folders and deposit them into this one folder. I don't want to do that, but it's possible. You can also move individual folders around, right? If this Hidden Valley Resort folder needed to go in this Caracol folder, I could take the whole folder and I could move it here like that. And it will say, you sure you want to move? And I could say yes. And look at that. See, now the Hidden Valley folder is a subfolder of Caracol. And there's no Command Z or Control Z that's gonna undo that, right? It happened on disk. So if you wanna undo that, you're gonna have to go to that folder or image, if you've moved an image, and purposefully put it back to where it was before, right? Which is what I've done. I just clicked and moved it onto the Belize folder. And now they're both subfolders of Belize. Okay, I'm gonna minimize this and we're gonna go back to clients. Since my import process is done, I can see there's no tasks up here. Again, I'm gonna scroll down to that last image. Where is it? Right here. So there's the image of last image of house number one, and this is the beginning of house two. So now I'm gonna select that image, and I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom, shift and click on that last image, and now all of these images are selected. All right, we go back up. And again, it doesn't matter which image I click on, they're all selected. So I just grab one in the middle here, click and drag to house number two, and then click move. <clears throat> and then again, you'll see this client's number doesn't change because nothing is changing. Um, I'm not moving any images um, out of this client's folder. I'm just moving them into a subfolder. That's a important distinction there, right? Okay, so there we go. 162 images now in the house one folder and 209 images now in the house two folder. So that's how you can move your stuff around in Lightroom. Again, if I wanted to put my clients folder in Aperture Academy, hey, I could do that. Just click it, drag it, move. There we go, All right? Now I have a clients folder in the Aperture Academy folder. I don't want that because these are not Aperture Academy clients. These are my own clients. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it back in the master pictures folder. If I minimize Aperture Academy, now it's back to the way it was. All right. To delete photos from this, that's pretty simple as well. You just hit the delete key, right? And you have three options. Cancel, remove from the catalog, but leave it on the disk, or delete from disk, which will actually put it in the recycling bin. I'm not gonna do any of that, but that's just how you delete photos, right? If I go to previous import, um, this is gonna take me to what literally just was imported. So 371 photos that came from that card are now here. If I click import again, right, my card is still here and you'll see that Lightroom's now searching through, that happened a little quickly, let's do that one more time. I'm gonna click import, it's automatically gonna go to my card and you'll see it's doing something here. It was searching through that card to find anything that it could import, right? And it's defaulting to new photos. So there's no new photos on this drive. It's just 
images that have already been imported. If I click all photos, you'll see that there are 371 photos, right? This is just what we imported, but they're all grayed out because they've already been imported into Lightroom. What happens if I click don't import suspected duplicates? Now, are they new photos? Yes, they are. So I don't want this, right? I don't wanna re-import any of these images. So again, make sure that's checked because you don't need those again. And again, this is the all of them. They're grayed out because they're already been imported into Lightroom. I'm gonna hit cancel here because we don't have to import anything. I'm gonna go to all photographs and now we can admire everything that we have, right? So everything that has been imported into Lightroom, um, looking at it by capture time, You'll see here in the bottom of the toolbar, capture time, A to Z. So this is the first photo I took. This is the last photo I took in this catalog. And that is how you import your images into Lightroom. Thank you for watching, and be on the lookout for more videos in the future. My name's Scott. Happy shooting.